Welcome to Radio Fixer's channel. Subscribe for upcoming videos. I remember when I had my first 50 subscriber, I told my wife, I said, guess what? I have 50 subscriber. She paused a little bit and said, how many people live around the world? I said, gee, mm, I see. So folks, what you want to do, somewhere in the bottom, there's a subscription button. Go ahead and select that, you know, and also there's a bell, you know, select that bell and use a drop down here and select all so it notify you whenever I upload new video put your thumb up what this does it notify other people they enjoy this hobby go ahead and share it to other people help me if my subscription goes up man make me look good all right I appreciate you I highly suggest going back and reviewing other parts of this beautiful Zenit radio where we repaired the cabinet without staining the cabinet. We also test all the resistor and replace all paper capacitor in this chassis. Coming up in part 3, we will discuss how to read and understand the proper connection for electrolytic capacitors on a schematic. In this schematic, I highlighted three electrolytic capacitors. Some schematic like this, they do not identify the polarity of the capacitor. What I mean by that, you know, which side is a positive and which side is a negative, so we know where to connect them. And that makes it confusing for those of you who have no electronic background or you're doing this as a hobby, it sometimes it's really overwhelming or confusing. Sometimes due to the age of the capacitors, like this one, the marking are erased or is very hard to see. And this multi-capacitor, they identify microfarads as well as voltages, but they did not identify the wire colors for each capacitor. That also make it confusing for those of you just got started. Okay, let's look at under the chassis. There are three wires comes out of electrolytic capacitor. One is a black, which is right here, ground or negative. These two, uh, one is red, another is orange. Uh, I need to figure out which one is a six microfarad and which one is. 16 microfarad. So let me show you what I did. Usually I draw the tube location in one side of the paper. You know, this is of course looking from the top. Then if you turn it around, you see right there, like 6F5, it's going to be right there. So then I can look at under the chassis. When you're looking at the under the chassis, on pin 8 of 6x5, there's a three connection. One goes to the speaker, another, the red wire from electrolytic capacitor is hooked up to it. The third thing, there's a resistor here, R19, is about 12k, soldered to pin 8. Other side of this resistor, is hooked up to the little connection here then orange wire also soldered there this orange of course goes to the capacitor as well that multi-section capacitor so i'm going to compare this to a schematic to figure out which one is a 16 microfarad and which one is a 6 microfarad let's do that as you notice, I transfer all the information to the schematic. In the bottom of the schematic, as you know, there is a chart which it shows all the parts and what the value of each parts are. Like here, C22 is a 6 microfarad, 623 is 16 microfarad. I also uh, remember when I was testing this power transformer, 
uh, which I highly suggest watch this video which I went through step by step how to test power transformer before I uh, get it started you want to make sure that is okay before continue to restore radios or repair radios so in that video we identified the ground wire of multi-section capacitor it was soldered right here is a black wire by knowing that we know this is a negative side of course so the other side is going to be positive there is a connection to r19 which is a resistor as we discussed and also is being soldered to pen 8 so this is going to be 16 microfarads so this is going to be a red wire that we discussed earlier so we know that's going to be 16 microfarad of course the other side the orange is going to be a 6 microfarad by doing this you know it make my job much easier especially for those of you who do not have electronic background i highly suggest to do this first you're going to get more comfortable reading a schematic second you know this last mistake <laughs> you're going to make right so that always helped me out doing this now let's focus on c24 which is another electrolytic capacitor 16 microfarad let's check that one out let's look at c24 again i check under the chassis and document some connection to make it easier uh, to compare it to a schematic same concept that we did here let me show you on a schematic what my finding was i transfer again all the information here we know c24 is 16 microfarad this is a three section resistor here this is where it's located under the chassis that is green so I compare this with the drawing as you notice this side of this capacitor is hooked up to this three section resistor goes through this resistor and the other side is grounded so my assumption that's going to be the negative side if I'm not correct please let me know the other side which it goes to the speaker is going to be a positive of course you remember this side was positive in c23 the positive connection was soldered here so that was my assumption this should be positive as well hopefully i'm right in this one and we will know when we start the radio if this capacitors get too hot or explode then i know i connected incorrectly but again this is a look at the common sense you know this side it goes through resistor hooked up to the ground you should be negative all right i have this case what i will do i put a new capacitor i'm going to put it inside here so what i did i removed this because i had such a hard time to take this unit out of the chassis it was a very bad location so it cut this off let me tell you what i'm going to do i got a metal like this of course use a special metal cutter i got a piece of like very thin the same thickness of this as you can see it's almost same thickness i already bend it this goes perfect around here see like that i'm not going to you know a stamp it inside like the original was a stamped i'm going to install it i will show you somewhere that be easier down the road to take the capacitor out and remove them as you know a capacitor usually goes bad so i'm not going to install it where it was because that is was so hard to get to it with so much things here i will show you what however i'm going to install it so next thing i'm going to glue this you know to protect it uh, i will show you i'm going to use this tacky glue as you notice i use it in all my projects radio project because they work pretty well this one is diluted with the water you know it says uh, to make it a little thinner i'm going to brush glue over it like that i'm going to leave a good thick layer everywhere 
is to protect this paper. So let me continue. I'm going to put everywhere, not inside, but outside everywhere. All right, you see there's a glue everywhere. Uh, don't worry when this dry, <laughs> it's going to be very clear. Uh, again, I'm adding this to protect the paper. Uh, since this is very old cardboard, this will save the cardboard. I've done this in the past and I had a great success with it. I will show you when it's dry. Okay, so I'm going to let it set to be totally dry. And this is it. Uh, the glue already dried up totally. You see how shiny it is. Easy to read. Then I also installed the capacitor inside this container uh, to see how I actually create multi section. You know, capacitor, feel free to watch this video, which I explain ex step by step how to do this. Other sides of the chassis, there is a bunch of holes here. As you saw, I create this. It's a clip head belt that I'm going to center through this hole from inside. Then I'm going to bend, bend this to support it. That way it will stay over there pretty safe. And down the road, myself or somebody else want to fix this radio, they can just uh, take this out much easier than before. Before it was so hard the way they stamped them inside. So let me install this. All right, you see how I bend it? It's very, they're now very secure. It's not going to come out and it's going to be much easier to remove it next time. Hopefully will not going to be next time, but at least going to be much simpler. Let me show you the other side. And this is inside. See how I installed the capacitor. It's pretty secure. See, it's pretty safe. Install the other capacitor as well. Let's solder the multi-capacitor in. There's not enough space. That's the issue. These parts are so close to each other. Believe it or not, this is the last capacitor in this radio that we need to focus on. It's a little different this shape than the paper capacitor. I have two options. One, replace it with the same value of capacitor. Another, I put safety capacitor here. Since it's one side is hooked up to the power line, another side of this capacitor is soldered to the ground or chassis. In next upcoming video, we will discuss why we should use safety capacitors and how to select proper safety capacitor for your radios. So stay tuned. At this time, I want to take the opportunity and thanks my subscribers uh, with their uplifting comments. You always encourage me to upload more videos since this is just a hobby of mine. Again, I appreciate you. Enjoy all these videos and you all have an awesome day. Take care. If you're interested to see more videos like this, uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel and you will be notified uh, when new video being uploaded. You have a great day.